what I'm going to show you right now is kind of how I go about doing some adjusting on the desktop. Everybody's desktop, pretty much uh, your computer will have a photo editing program. Most of them all have something bundled with it. It might be a lesser Photoshop program. I have uh, photo, uh, one of the main Photoshop programs. I think it's uh, CC, I think whatever, I forget what it is, but I, I just have a monthly fee that I pay to Photoshop and I get a I get a, uh, um, I pretty much have a subscription to Photoshop. They, up, they update everything that, uh, uh, that Photoshop has to offer. It just keeps updated all the time. Uh, so let's go to, uh, you know, one, of the, one of the best things you want to do, or one, one of the things you want to do for your, uh, your images that you're going to work from is to have them as close to exposure as possible. So when you're out taking the photograph of your uh, particular scenes, uh, let me get a <coughs> excuse me, let me get a color here. When you're out taking your photographs, <coughs> look at the scene. Uh, <coughs> look at the scene without the camera in front of you. Look at it and look for look at the areas like like the areas that are dark. Let me get this adjusted. Uh, let me get my camera here. Uh, look at some of the dark areas in the scene <clears throat> and also look at some of the lighter areas in the scene and make sure that the, let's say the light areas don't get blown out. Here's a pretty much a light area. You still can see some detail of the brick in here. Uh, this is a light area. You can still see color and detail. <clears throat> in the dark areas there are uh, some uh, good uh, value ranges. There's middle values and then so it's very dark values. I shot this with my iPhone and again what I did is I probably touched um, again your focus area which will also adjust your <coughs> your little uh, exposure. I probably focused for something like around this here uh, in a more of a gray area versus a light area or like this area or like this area. If it went to this then all the light areas would get overexposed. And if I went to some of the uh, light areas, then all the dark areas would get completely underexposed. If I tap a middle value area in the scene, then it'll probably help adjust to both of these two uh, extremes and you will get a much better exposure. Uh, here's now the same scene where <coughs> it's completely overexposed. Now, if you have a shot like this, you might be able to come back and of course now with Photoshop, I can come in and make some adjustments. I can go to my, my brightness and, uh, and I, can do, I can come back and make this a little bit uh, darker. <coughs> I can bring back those light areas. You can see this got a little bit better from what it was initially. Here, here it was. It got a little bit more color. And then I can also go back to uh, 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 my contrast and possibly uh, adjust that. That's, that's one way of being able to do it. You can also go through uh, your uh, levels and I can come in levels and make some adjustments here. But sometimes what I find is if, if my shot gets overexposed, it's hard to get information back. <coughs> I would rather, if anything, I would rather go to a scene. I'm going to go back to the initial one I had. And I would rather, if anything, um, have a scene that is underexposed. If it's slightly underexposed, let's see if I'm going in the right direction. Here it is. If, I, if it's slightly underexposed, I can always <coughs> go back in to my programs and, and, and retrieve information. If it's overexposed, there's no information to retrieve. Then it's kind of hard to hard to get uh, that information uh, back that you've lost, that you never that you never had. Take multiple exposures of your scenes. That'll help, too. <coughs> These cameras are very good at taking low-light situations. Here's a, a it was, it was a, just becoming evening. The sky was uh, uh, getting darker, and a, 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 a night, light, uh, night light or a yard light was on in, in this particular uh, farm driveway. And I, I just stopped along the road, got a closer uh, uh, shot, uh, and uh, it took the sh took the shot, and it, it might be slightly a little bit slightly grainy because of 
of, of the exposure it had to take, but there's a lot of information that these cameras will capture. It's amazing what they can, what they can do. Here now, here's another shot that I took. Um, this was in uh, Texas and a uh, uh, particular park that was really interesting. And the camera pretty much exposed for all this area here. And you can kind of see where the sky has some grays to it, but it's starting to get slightly overexposed. So I will, I, I can either leave it at, I would, I would rather take a shot like this where all my very important information is exposed properly. And if I'm going to paint from this, I will just make sure that I paint this a little bit darker. Again, what I can do is I can, to compensate for that, is I can take a number of shots. Take one shot where I'm exposing the the, the image for all the dark and middle values, and then tap uh, the let uh, tap the iPhone up in a light area or like this area, this area, and then it will give you a different exposure. You take another shot, so you've got a couple different shots that you can work with, which is uh, very important. Here's a shot that um, uh, I wanted that that shadow information in the front to read. I wanted all this information to read. I, there's sunlight early in the morning hitting on some of these trees. And then beyond that, we have wonderful light and aerial perspective going back here with some grayed blue sky. This shot is pretty much accurate for, uh, uh, for, the, uh, for the scene. And again, it, it was, I don't remember exactly what I did, but I probably uh, found the focus to be uh, probably in around this area and then touch the screen when I found that little sun that that gentleman was talking about I can move my finger and adjust the exposure to get the proper shot and again because you're not shooting film or slides I can do I can do numerous ones I can go up a little bit lighter, dark a little bit darker, take another shot, come down with my son a little bit further, a little bit further, take numerous shots that when I come back, I, I know I've got something that's gonna work or a combination of them that will eventually work. Uh, let's take a look here at, here's a particular scene that, that I shot of an image and sometimes it comes out a little bit on the dark side. Now what I can do on this one is go to uh, on Photoshop, I can go to levels, and when it comes up, you can see this. This is the light side. You can see the light side here, and this is the dark side. And this graph will show you kind of what what it what 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 it's uh, uh, picking up, and what it's not picking up is much of the light side. If I move this little arrow over this way, you'll see the whole image start to lighten up a little bit. And, and get to be much more, this is probably a little bit closer to what the exact uh, exposure will be. If I went, you can see these areas here that are very light. <clears throat> if I go over further, they will get lighter and, light, and they'll, they'll, blur, they'll burn out, if you will. They'll, they'll get too light and they'll become uh, <clears throat> more or less overexposed. But you can see the initial shot was underexposed I can correct it and get it a little bit closer to what it was by just adjusting. In this case, I went to levels to adjust. So I'm just gonna cancel that for right now. Here's another uh, a particular, this is a painting. And I'll, when I shoot my works, I'll shoot a little bit of, of extra around the outside and I can always uh, crop into that. If I'm gonna do some cropping, crop this into in, 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 in even further, I can go, go to my cropping tool. This is my cropping tool. And I can find, say I want to crop into the painting just a little bit. And I can bring this all the way down to here so that I have a slight <clears throat> a bleed, if you will, of the image. And I can hit crop. And I, I no longer have that background. So uh, that that is a way of getting rid of that. And you clean up your shot very nicely. You can do that also in in your iPhone program. There's a place where you can go and and uh, <clears throat> correct your or crop your images. When you're shooting dark paintings uh, or dark images, you're going to have to look to these very dark places here. Oops, let me get my paint tool. You have to look to the very dark areas in your painting. <clears throat> so I'll match 
I'll match this up in the image with the actual image I have, the actual painting. Then I'll look at some of the brighter areas. And what I have to make sure is that this doesn't get too bright. I have a lot of white in, in the painting <clears throat> with a little bit of color. And I wanted that brilliance of that sense of that light coming through that window. So I had to make the adjustment so that I got that sense of light here, which the original has, but yet that these areas didn't get too dark and they still have color variations to them. You can see there's rich color still and, and uh, rich color and also value differences still in the, um, let's say more from five to 10 value range. There's a quite a, a, a difference in here uh, from really dark to, uh, to, to, to the middle darks to the very light areas. And I get some of the warmer areas where you have the uh, sense of the incandescent lights that I was also capturing in this particular scene. <clears throat> Here's another one here of a, of a, of a painting that I, uh, uh, that I did and, and cropped it. And let's see if uh, here is, Here's the, uh, here's, the, here's the cropping again. And uh, again, what you can do is come in. I can make all kinds of adjustments. I can go to my brightness and I can make it, let's see, that would be too light. I can make it a little bit darker. And I, what I do is sometimes I go to the extremes. Instead of going just a little ways, I wanna see how, okay, if I went like that, that's way too dark. If I went like this, that's way too light. So I go back to, you can always go back to your, your zero will be where you started out from. But let's say I want to make it just a little bit darker. And then I can go to contrast. If I can go up this way, you can see it makes the darks very dark and the lights real light. But if I go just a little bit more, then I get a little bit more of that contrast from, it, from what it initially was. Let's go, let's go right about there. And I'll say I'll hit OK. And then we'll go back to the one I had earlier. You can see this one, it has just a little bit of a grayness to it. And after adjusting, it just cleans it up and, and gets the, the proper dark values, the accents uh, properly exposed and, and value uh, to them. Uh, let's go here. If you have a painting that is skewed, um, then, then you can use in Photoshop uh, and also on the iPhone, you can use a program that helps to unskew the photo. Sometimes you can't get right straight onto the photo, or if I get right straight onto the photo, there's a big glare. So I'll shoot a little bit off to the angle. In Photoshop, I can go to this particular tool here, which is interesting. I can put a dot here. Uh, I can't go way to the outside because I, I don't have the whole frame, but I'm going to go just to the outside. I'll, I'll, I'll touch it once. What that does is it leaves a dot. There's one. There's one dot. Now I'm going to come over to this corner and I'm going to hit a dot there. I'm going to come down here and hit another dot there. And then one last one over in this corner. I'll touch that there. Then I'll hit my return on my keyboard and you can see what it did. It's completely straightened out the image and it, it's no longer skewed. Now I could get in if I needed to and crop it even more, you know, with my crop tool. And I can crop it. Uh, let's say I want to get the artist's signature. This is a, well, well uh, uh, you can see it's a little bit, a little bit off. If you sometimes have, have it slightly off like this, then you can also, let me just get rid of that for right now. You can also, let's say if I wanted to straighten that out, I can go to, uh, uh, the uh, rotate, and I'll do an arbitrary rot ro rotate. So it means I can go just a little bit either clockwise or counterclockwise. Let's go, what we want to do is we want to go counterclockwise in this case and bring this corner up. So I'm just going to go 0.5 and see what that does. You can see that did just enough. Now let's try that cropping again. And at least this way I can get the artist's signature. Let's say I want to get his signature. Uh, this is a Frederick Judd Bois painting. And uh, let's, see, uh, right up, let's see, right about there. And I can hit the, uh, hit the crop. And I got it cropped and, and I'd maybe have to do just a little bit to get rid of that on that side there. So it just kind of shows you how you can go in and, 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 and crop something and again, correct the skew 
if you had if you couldn't get straight onto something, or if um, um, if it, if your shot just turned out a little bit awkward, you can always correct it. There's a lot of editing features in Photoshop. A lot of these uh, similar editing features are also in the smartphone editing programs that come with the phone. And then again, as uh, as that one uh, video showed, you can get some additional apps that will help you uh, do your adjusting. So anyways, this should help with uh, some of the problems. Uh, I know that that's frustrating when you when you paint something and you try to get the values right and then you and then your your capture device, whatever it is, your phone or your cameras are not quite capturing that image properly. The, I did post earlier uh, some information on a good friend Scott Burdick on how to photograph your paintings, uh, a proper way to photograph your paintings using lighting and uh, filter, uh, uh, well, a polarizing filter, both on your camera lens and on your lights. That is how I do it professionally. If I'm going to just post something real quickly, I won't go to that whole bother, and I will shoot it sometimes with my iPhone and, and take a shot. But again, these devices that we get used to using, they have their limitations. For me, uh, if I want to record my, my work for future whatever, advertising, maybe a book or whatever later on, I need to have some good images. So I take uh, some very uh, good professional photographs uh, with, with, with a camera and lighting equipment as, as Scott Burdick in that, in that tutorial uh, or that, that uh, uh, video uh, reveals. And <clears throat> I believe Gabor just posted not too long ago uh, some information using a Lightroom. Uh, Lightroom is another app and that is really good for uh, adjusting. So uh, be smart, do, uh, do your editing, get it as close as you can uh, with value and saturation and uh, it, you'll be that much more happier uh, in, the far, in the end run. So take care, uh, keep those brushes to the canvas. Bye now. Hi, my name is Ken Backus, and welcome to this online art instructional course. I've been involved in the arts professionally my entire life. I am a signature member of the Plain Air Painters of America, master signature member of both the Oil Painters of America and the American Impressionist Society. My works have appeared in many of the national art magazines. I've been included in several books, to name a few, The Art of the National Parks, Sea to Shining Sea, and the Enchanted Isle Plein Air Painting on Catalina Island. I was one of the hosts for two art-related public television series, Plein Air Painting the American Landscape and the art instructional series Passport and Palette. I've been teaching art workshops for over 20 years. Prompted by many students' requests, I created this particular study to studio course. This course is developed for either the indoor or outdoor painter. The translation from a reference study to a larger studio painting has always been a challenging process. In this four-week course, I define the tools of my trade, my palette, and an important color mixing demonstration. I will take you through the same exact process which has proven to be successful for me in the studio, including various creative options that will improve the results of your studio efforts. My process of teaching is wrapped around the sound and historic foundations and principles that are the guidelines that defines quality art. I feel confident and believe that you will discover this course to be very beneficial to your future artistic development. Tucson Art Academy's online courses is the new way for art educational opportunities. I hope to see and work with you in this new online course.